DuPont made some very bold claims last year about its uh, growth projections. Um, could you uh, give us an update on uh, how that's actually panning well, out? Well, I guess uh, in a nutshell, I'd have to say those claims weren't bold enough. As I, as I think about uh, the conversation we had about a year ago, I, was, uh, I, I thought I was optimistically projecting about 30% growth for the industry in 2010. And uh, we're seeing uh, probably over 100% this year. So uh, overwhelming, I guess, is the way I would sum it up in a word. Right. Now, um, in that respect then, you know, you, you've made um, uh, certain investments, obviously, to meet capacity. But what, what specifically have you done recently as far as uh, TEDLAR capacity expansion plans? Well, we, we've been ag aggressively investing to keep up with this uh, industry growth uh, for many years now. Uh, and uh, if, if I look at the recent history, in 2008, we doubled our uh, capacity for resin, which is a key input for films. Uh, right now, in 2010, we have a total of uh, $300 million in capacity expansions underway. This is uh, for expanding uh, production of intermediates, resins for film production, and film production itself. Uh, much of that will come online in the fourth quarter of this year. And then the final stage, which is a major film expansion, uh, will come online uh, in the fourth quarter of 2011. So all, all combined, this uh, essentially doubles our capability from where we are today. Now, um, obviously, with, you've increased in capacity significantly, but, but what have been the latest innovations as far as Tedla Film is concerned? Well, um, in, in general, uh, innovation in this industry is about uh, allowing us to reach grid parity, right? And there are three basic ways you can do that. You can improve the efficiency uh, of the cells. Uh, you can improve the total cost, uh, the installed cost of the system, and you can extend the lifetime of the system. In DuPont, we're doing all three of those. We have uh, uh, programs underway, for example, in uh, metallization paste for PV uh, to improve efficiencies. We have innovative materials that allow us to improve frame construction and construction of components. In TEDLAR, um, which is what we're talking about today, uh, our value uh, in that equation is extending the life of the module. And TEDLAR is the proven technology that allows 25 plus years of field performance. And the lifetime of the module is a fundamental driver in PV economics and a fundamental driver toward grid parity. So uh, now we recognize that uh, even though backsheet in TEDLAR is a fairly small component, of the total cost of a PV module, somewhere around 3% or so, uh, this, the industry still expects us uh, to do our part in helping drive down the total cost and, and, and toward agree, achieving grid parity. One of the innovations that we have that's very exciting in this uh, respect is uh, TEDLAR PV2400. This is a technology that allows us to simplify the value chain and essentially eliminate the use of a freestanding film and all the costs associated with that intermediate step. So we simplify the process uh, and allow uh, our customers, backsheet manufacturers, to directly apply a TEDLAR dispersion onto a backsheet core and do that uh, in closer proximity of the customer and, and allows us to be more re responsive and allows the supply chain to be more cost effective. So that's a, one of the key innovations we'll be talking about here at the show. Well, um, another area, obviously, is you know, how does TEDLAR compare then uh, with other backsheet materials you know, that are available on the market? Well, I, I don't think there's a lot of dispute about uh, the performance of TEDLAR. It, it is the industry standard and has been uh, uh, for as far back as anyone can remember. Um, we continue to do uh, extensive benchmark testing on all backsheet ma materials. And, uh, and, and in fact, at the show here, we have a poster presentation where we'll, we'll be highlighting the most re recent results of that testing. But our benchmark testing shows that clearly uh, uh, TEDLAR provides that long-term performance, whether you test in the, the normal environmental conditions uh, or, or extreme environmental conditions that we and many others in the industry are beginning to use, that uh, TEDLAR uh, resists delamination and yellowing and, and degradation uh, due to UV and other environmental factors uh, much better than any of the other alternatives that are out there. What type of TEDLAR film uh, are actually available today? Well, first let me say that uh, TEDLAR is TEDLAR. And TEDLAR means uh, long life performance and 25 years of performance in the field. 
Um, we, we provide Tedlar in uh, two different film formats, primarily to allow us flexibility to meet the industry's growth needs. One of those formats uh, uh, allows fast, incremental uh, capacity expansion. Uh, the other is a, is a much larger scale, but has longer lead time for implementation. We, we believe in order to meet the industry's long-term growth needs, we need both of these investment options in order to uh, keep up with the industry's growth. Um, there's also a third uh, platform that I mentioned uh, briefly just a moment ago, our PV2400, Tedlar PV2400. This allows us to eliminate the use of film completely and uh, simplify the value chain and apply Tedlar dispersion directly onto a backsheet core. This simplifies the value chain, uh, reduces total value chain investment, uh, and allows us to get the production of uh, Tedlar on a backsheet closer to the customer, uh, which, which gives us more flexibility in the market.